I'd like to thank people like Candace Parker, who I think is doing a terrific job as she transitions from her playing career to media. People like Roz Gold on Wooday, who's been incredibly welcoming, welcoming of me and made the job a lot easier. Kristen Ledlow has made my transition radically easier to the media side of things. So for all of you on International Women's Day, thank you very much for all you've done. That was terrific. All right, we're back, and as you can see, another special guest. We're joined by Kareth Burke, who covers the Golden State Warriors. Thank you so much for joining us, and happy International Women's Day. Likewise, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's get right to it. You guys are always at the top of sports news when you follow the NBA. The latest splash that you made was bringing back a very familiar face in Andrew Bogut. How has he been received? Great. The players are talking about how much of a, a how a teammate, how much of a great teammate he was. They remember his defense. They remember that he played with the core guys, Steph and Clay and Draymond, when the Warriors were rebuilding things, when they won their first championship, when they had that 73 and 9 season. They recall that he was tough. They recall that he plays defense, and he's coming to join this team as an insurance policy for the playoff push. So, Kara, this is when uh, insurance policy, or is there a little bit of um, side eye going on out there with the Demar <laughs> Marcus Cousins? <laughs> I mean, I'm asking the question because you look on the internet and people are trying to figure out. We've seen kind of boogie some of the games where he's not necessarily finishing. They change. He may go small. I mean, Kerr may go small. So, do you think there will be any type of chemistry issues um, that may occur with this? I don't know, and, and to that question, I understand why you're asking, but Boogie is the top dog around here. He is the starter, he is making strides. The Warriors are giving him that runway to get better after he missed a year with that Achilles in, uh, injury. So he is over the hump conditioning wise, and he is finishing better. He's doing more things laterally that he couldn't when he first started back in January. They're seeing the improvement. They're seeing those, you know, some 20 and 10 games from him. He is putting it together. Now, okay, it is curious to add another center to the roster, but it's an insurance policy. Steve Kerr, Kerr is assuring everybody. And Boogie, excuse me, Bogut said the same thing. He said, I might join this team and just wave a towel for the first 18 games, and that's <laughs> okay with me. So nobody's talking about anybody stealing minutes or anything like that like that it's a collective effort to be teammates now there's one more thing Bogut said that there were some uh, conflicts with Boogie when they were on the court so mm -hmm. he expects to come in kind of smooth those over <laughs> there were some near scuffles maybe some bad blood but it's all water under the bridge when you're teammates right love that love it no I love that little <laughs> drama I like that you brought <laughs> that out yes. Yes. my question is when you say insurance policy obviously they're adding you know another player to this already deep roster but why Andrew Bogan? I understand because he played there. There was all type of names that was floating out from buyout players. What did they see in Andrew Bogan? Not because of the past, but what has he done lately to say, this is the guy we think, if he's an insurance poly, that can help us win another championship? Well, Steve, I think they look at what he was doing in Australia. He was just the MVP of the National Basketball League there, so he is in shape. He's been playing high-level basketball. Yes, there's going to be a little bit of a curve coming back to the NBA, but he's in a great position. So when you see a need at center, when you see a guy who is familiar with this system, when you see a guy who's played with some of the exist existing players, this felt like a win-win situation, and Bogut says he, he knows his place, he's excited to join in, and I think he can contribute when it comes to matchups, um, if they need some extra minutes, if they need a little bit more toughness, if people are going to pick on bo uh, Boogie maybe in the pick and roll, maybe just having Bogut can do a, a few extra things matchup wise. Kareth, one of the things I've been interested in is what we've seen throughout the season with this Warriors team. At times there's been I wouldn't say disinterest, but it seems that for big games, usually when you're playing a, t a team that's top in the East, top in the West, you actually get up for those games. And they've, they've lost a few of those games by big margins. What are you hearing around there from Steve Kerr, from the players, to understand why they haven't been able to get up for those games that you normally will call some key matchups throughout the season? The coaches are trying to find that answer, and the players are too, because we just saw an example, right? It's when the Warriors lost at Oracle to 33 points 
to the Celtics, right? This was a game they should have been up for. They were talking about the respect for the Celtics, that this is a tough opponent. And we've seen some other per perplexing moments at home for the Warriors where, say, they lost to Toronto, who was playing without Kawhi Leonard. They lost to Houston, who was playing without uh, James Harden. They lost that marquee game at Christmas to the Lakers by 26 points, and that was a game where LeBron James left. Mm -hmm. So the Warriors have to put this together at home. They just had that conversation this week, that sort of gut check moment of, guys, we talked about this at the beginning of the season, how special these games at Oracle are because it's the last season at Oracle. You know, they want to honor the greatness of what this arena is and get back to that identity of it's really hard to beat the Warriors at home. They want to kind of solve what's going on here with the remaining nine games left in this arena. Kara, Stephanie again here. You mentioned their identity, how they have been so hard to beat, especially at home. Well, Klay Thompson missed the last two games right in the midst of a stretch where they weren't playing their best basketball. He's expected to play tonight. Are there going to be any minute restrictions, and how do you think that he'll get acclimated back into the swing of things? No, as far as I know, no minutes restrictions. And, you know, Clay is a competitor. It eats him up when he can't play. And I think when he was watching that Celtics game, he was a little bothered by what he was seeing out there because Clay is the guy who was tasked with guarding the opponent's best player. He's, he's an excellent two way player. I think he's eager to get back into things tonight against Denver. This is a huge game, considering Denver is chasing the Warriors in the standings, just one game separating them. So everyone will be up for this one. Clay, as well, he is definitely an Iron Man for this team. Excellent. And of course, we cannot talk about the Golden State Warriors without talking about Stephen Curry and not basketball. Actually, I want to talk about his shoes. You know the story. Little Riley yeah. wrote the letter to Stephen and he got the, her the shoes and actually she helped him design a gorgeous pair. Have you seen them? I have. They're purple and I saw the smile on her face. It was adorable. I love that. We're showing them right now to our uh, viewers at home so they can get a good look at them. Uh, Riley Morrison has really inspired a lot of people around the country because she took the initiative to write a letter to Stephen Curry asking why the shoes were not available in the girls section of the website that they are sold on. And I love Stephen Curry's reaction. You get to work with him. You're around him all the time. Is that normal? People at home think, oh, maybe this is a one off. It's for publicity. But I think we know better than that, right? No, it really is for real. First, I was impressed that he answered her in the first place, and it wasn't just, oh, I'm sorry. He put those words into action. He said, I'll make this right, and that means a lot to him. He, he wrote about how he has daughters. He wrote about the world that he wants for them, and he's really serious.